can I have an annual event in my property business? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. Annual events, what are they? How can we make use of them? And what is it all about? An annual event is something that an employer can put on for their employees, their staff, and there are potentially some national insurance and taxation reporting requirements. Now today, I'm probably going to focus more on what you can do without having the national insurance and tax requirements that you have to deal with, but it's useful to just give you the full picture because then in your property company, you can be making use of the annual ex events, exemptions, to see what can you be doing each year within your company as the directors or employees of that business to be enjoying the fruits of your labor. So what do you need to be reporting if you have to report? So the first thing is that you are doing an annual event. So it's something that you are doing on a regular basis. It's got to be open to all employees. So this means everyone, whether it be a secretary through to a director, whoever you're employing in your business, you've got to have it open to everyone. There is a limit on how much you can spend per head. And we'll get onto that in a second because that is probably quite useful to determine what you may or may not be doing as a group. You may need to report how many events you are having each year and whether they're a director and how much that director is earning. So there's a few things you may need to report. However, today's video is not focused on what we want to report, it's focused on what we can be doing without having to report. So let's move on to the key question here of what is exempt and what can you be doing? There are three key things we therefore need to look at. So the first one of these is that it is an annual event. So we're talking about a Christmas party, a business anniversary, a summer barbecue, whatever you may want to be doing, it has to be an annual event. Now, I appreciate over a number of years with pandemics, with other things happening in the world, these annual events may not have been happening. However, the intention needs to be that this is an annual event because obviously in the first year you do it, it won't have been annual. But then you follow through each year and you have this annual event each year. The next criteria is that it's open to all employees. So it's open to everyone, all the directors, all the employees in the business are open to come to this event. And that is quite a crucial one. So if there is more than just yourself and maybe another director, you do need to be inviting everyone to this event. And the final one, which is probably the most crucial here, is that it's not more than £150 per head. So for each employee, each director, you can spend up to £150. Now this doesn't have to be in one event. You might decide that you want to have two events. However, it's 150 per annum. So on that basis, you might have two events. One is you've spent 50 pounds, the other you spent 100 pounds. But again, they both need to be annual events and they need to both be open to all employees. So the total in a period is not over 150. And this can apply to both online events and in real person events as well. So this is probably a tweet that's happened over the last couple of years, but it is open to any type of event. Some other bits just to mention then. It may be you're based in different locations. Now that's not the end of the world. Again, we've mentioned you may be able to have an online event or something like that. Or if one of you is traveling, you may be able to claim some of the expense, travel expenses as well. So just being in different locations is not the end of the world. As we've mentioned, you can have more than one event. However, the key here is that it, you're not going over the £150 per head exempt amount per annum, per tax year. So you do just need to keep that in mind. So what are the repercussions? Well, the repercussions are that you're going to have to do some reporting to Haitian Revenue and Customs. You're going to have to do is what is called a P11D. Now, this is what's known as a benefits in kind form. So what you would have to do is report the full cost of the total event, not just the bit that's over £150. And as a business, you will have to pay Class 1A national insurance on the full cost of the event. Now, your employee potentially will have to pay some taxation on this, 
based on the value or the benefit that they have received of going to that event. So there is a few things here that might have an impact that you probably want to try and target under this sort of amount. There is the option of a PAYE settlement, which I'm not going to dwell on today. However, again, this is additional tax cost for the business, which defuncts the benefit of having potentially the event in the first place. So if you can keep your events under 150 per person, then on that basis, you'll be able to have an exempt event and enjoy the event and the benefits and costs of putting that through the business. Any costs you incur on the event will all be tax allowable as long as you're fulfilling the requirements of having all of your employees allowed at the event and the costs, it doesn't really matter. You'll still have them allowable. The key thing for the £150 is really that you're not going to be paying any additional taxes and it's still tax allowable for your business, which is going to reduce your corporation tax bill, which is always a positive. Hopefully today you've discovered what you can be putting through your property business what annual events you can be claiming. If you have any questions then do please leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel and let's make tax less taxing.